Well, welcome along to Mark Langdon's Bets Club in association with freesupertips.com, your home for daily football hackers and bet builders. As you can see and hear, it's not Jack Reeve and Mark in the respective hot seats for this week's show. Instead, it's myself, Tom McGarry and James Milton, who will be talking you through what promises to be another Really exciting weekend in the Premier League. We'll have Aaron Ashley joining us later as well to discuss his tips and predictions from the EFL. As we're, we're into April now, so very much officially entering the business end of the season with trophies to be won, titles to be decided and relegations as well to be confirmed since the international break towards the end of last month. The action really has been coming thick and fast. We had a full programme in the Premier League last weekend, including a bit of a damp squib between Manchester City and Arsenal, big title game. And then in the midweek, we've had a busy programme as well. We're, as we record, still in the midst of that with a couple of games to come on Thursday. But our focus is going to be very much on this weekend's action and James as I say we're entering the business end of the campaign this is the part of football we all we all really love and get excited about absolutely the games as you say coming thick and fast and um you know no no wonder uh, Jack and Mark have, have, have opted for a little break this week we've got fresh legs and uh hopefully we can can uh, have a decent impact like uh Mikel Arteta's uh, Arsenal understudies uh, in midweek Absolutely, yeah, they did really well, beating Luton by two goals to nil. The big game coming up this weekend, then the one that really attracts the eye, is the 3.30 kickoff on a Sunday. Seems to be becoming a bit of a regular feature, a 3.30 start now uh, for, for the big game. And that is, of course, Manchester United against Liverpool. These two sides met just three weeks ago in the FA Cup. United winning a thriller. 4-3 after extra time. Ahmed Diallo, you'll remember, scoring the dramatic late winner. United not involved in the title race, facing an uphill battle just to qualify for the Champions League. Liverpool, though, very much are. As I've mentioned, we're recording this ahead of Thursday night's games, which these two sides are involved in. United are travelling to Stamford Bridge to take on Chelsea. Liverpool host Sheffield United, but setting aside those matches, we're going to focus very much on this big game. As I say, Liverpool in the hunt for the title. Jurgen Klopp in the Liverpool dugout for the last time going to Old Trafford to face Manchester United. James, this is always a big game with so much riding on it, particularly for Liverpool. It takes on really extra importance and if we get anything like the game we had in the in the FA Cup just last month then we'll be in for a treat the the price is you can get Manchester United at around 10 to 3 the the same price as well for the draw Liverpool unsurprisingly favorites heading into this one despite losing to the Red Devils in the cup they are available at 7 to 10 but as I say James if we get anywhere near the entertainment we got a couple of weeks ago we should be in for a treat Absolutely. I mean, that was a, a, a stunning cup tie. And um, uh, just to temper our enthusiasm a little bit, the reverse fixture, of course, at Anfield ended 0-0. But well, I think Liverpool racked up something like 34 attempts at goal and, you know, just couldn't find the finishing touch there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a huge game for, for Liverpool. You know, we're assuming that they're not going to slip up at home to Sheffield United. Stranger things have happened, but... Um, you know, the, the, their record at Anfield suggests they're going to um, return to the top of the table uh, with, with a win there. Uh, I, I think um, I think it's going to be another high-scoring game, you know, like the cup tie. Uh, I just feel United have, have been, been so hampered by defensive injuries, never seem to be able to get a, a settled uh, back four out. And, you know, that's really, really dangerous against a, a Liverpool side who are absolutely on a mission aren't they to uh, to give Jurgen Klopp the the perfect send off yeah absolutely and as you say since the the cup game uh, as well united weren't great were they against brentford last weekend very much up and down in terms of their performances their results of course which is why they're they're so far off the pace when you compare them 
to the likes of Liverpool and just feel like Liverpool is starting to get over some of the injury problems they've had as well, particularly in the final third where they'll be hoping Mo Salah is uh, fit and firing as well. Absolutely. I mean, he's got a terrific record against against United as he does uh, against most Premier League opponents. Um, I think you're right about the, the Brentford game. You know, United looked as though they'd, they'd nicked an extraordinary victory when Mason Mount scored in, in injury time. Then they conceded a 99th minute equaliser. But I mean, you know, they, they they allowed Brentford 31 shots at goal. They, Brentford hit the hit the woodwork four times, I think. And you know, if they're giving up anywhere near as many chances to Liverpool, they are going to be punished. Um, so l- looking at the the betting, I'm obviously Liverpool pretty hot favourites to win at Old Trafford. Which, yeah, so if you're if you're a, a, a child of the of the 90s, the early days of the Premier League, it's still quite hard to get your head round. You know, Liverpool being such a short price to, to win at United. But, um, yeah, in terms of recent seasons, they have uh, really dominated um, this fixture. Liverpool to win and over two and a half goals looks uh, a decent bet, uh, I think. Um, you know, last month's FA Cup tie, obviously, was a, was a cracker. Seven goals in 120 minutes. Um, and, and before that stalemate at Anfield this season, Liverpool have won four of the previous five meetings in the league. Uh, score lines, uh, so, uh, mute this if you're a United fan, score lines of 7-0, 4-0, 5-0 and 4-2. Um, as you said there, Liverpool's attacking unit is is back pretty much to full strength. And yeah, I don't think they're going to slip up at Old Trafford. Yeah, you got to whisper that a 7-0 score line uh, very quietly in certain quarters. That was a, <laughs> Brutal. Still a year ago. Uh, but it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a very, very standout score. And that, that would, if that came in again, not that I'm expecting it to be a 7 0, but that would uh, mean your bet comes in as well of Liverpool to win uh, and over two and a half goals. But yeah, any, anything can happen when, when these two meet. It's the, it's the old cliche, isn't it? When their two rivals go head to head, that the form goes out of the water. But, but Liverpool have been just so much stronger than Manchester United and more consistent over the season, regardless of the. The scoreline in the cup, yeah, it looks like Liverpool should be should be good value to, to go on and get the three points and hopefully, yeah, another entertaining game. Members Club is now available on the Racing Post app. All Members Club subscribers can now access premium news and tips anytime, anywhere. Plus, if you're not already a member, you'll get 50% off your first three months. If you haven't already subscribed yet and want to join the greatest club in racing, simply visit racingpost.com forward slash subscribe that's the the big match prediction then manchester united against liverpool of course there's plenty of action elsewhere in the premier league it's it's a busy saturday there are plenty of games taking place seven in total including the early kickoff the, the lunchtime start at selhurst park crystal palace against another of the title contenders manchester city james palace have been a little bit of a bogey side for City over recent years. I remember Andros Townsend scoring a, a spectacular goal against them a, a few seasons ago. They drew the reverse picture at the Etihad as well in December. But Palace, pretty comfortable in the Premier League standings, eight points clear of the drop zone. This is a fixture that, that City will expect to go on and win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you've, you've mentioned Palace. They're, they're kind of in no man's land a bit, aren't they? They're not. They're not quite going to get dragged into the relegation battle, I don't think. But, and then I think they're about sort of eight points or so behind behind Fulham. So you know, they're they're kind of kind of uh, not not really going anywhere. And and you know, are we are we entering on the beach territory now? We're into April. <laughs> I, don't, I think the the one thing I would say is obviously they've got a, a fairly new manager there, but that doesn't seem to have been much of a, a of a spark from uh, from Oliver Glasnow. Uh, won his first game in charge. That was against ten man Burnley at home. Uh, since then they've taken two points from four games, and the last three of those have been against Luton, Forest, and Bournemouth, which you know you'd see were kind of winnable fixtures. So I'm not uh, I'm not expecting a, a slip up from City here. I don't think they're going to turn on the style at, at Selhurst Park. Away from home, they've, they've uh, had to grind it out a bit this season. Obviously, a terrific response from them um, uh, against Aston Villa, uh, inspired by Phil Foden. Absolutely brilliant hat-trick um, in, in midweek um, after after the, uh, the the stalemate against Arsenal. So I think City will, uh, will get the job done. Um, 
you know, they had uh, Harland, De Bruyne and John Stones as, as unused substitutes in midweek as well. So, you know, they, sh- they, they should be fresher. Um, I, I think probably a 2-0, 2-0 Manchester City correct score looks the way to go here. I don't think Palace are going to get steamrolled by, by the champions, but um, they're just lacking a bit of uh, cutting edge themselves. Yeah, a bit ominous for Palace, isn't it, that City are able to, to rest players of, of that calibre during the week and they should all come back into the side on Saturday, fresh and raring to go. The, the prices uh, for, for the lunchtime game, incidentally, Palace are around about 9-1 to one to cause a shock. It's 4-1 to one the draw and, and City, as you would expect, heavy favourites at 1-3 to, to to go on and collect all three points. Five matches then kicking off at 3 o'clock on Saturday. We'll begin with the, the team City beat during the week. Aston Villa still in a fourth position, looking to qualify for the Champions League. And, and they'll be hosting Brentford. It's 4-6 to six for the Villa victory, 3-1 to one the draw, 4-1 to one that, that Brentford can clinch the three points on the road. And I suppose, James, not quite to the same degree. They're a couple of points worse off than Crystal Palace, but Brentford, who had a nil-nil with Brighton during the week, also look like they're just a Maybe a couple more points away be, from being confirmed as safe. Yeah, and I think they could actually get something from from this game. I like the look of uh, the Brentford or draw double chance bet. Um, yeah, Villa obviously had a, a, a grueling game against City. I think they only had about thirty three percent possession, conceded four goals, and had not been entirely convincing for a while now. I mean, needed a, a late winner to, uh, uh, to to win three two at Luton. Obviously lost 4-0 at home to Tottenham, had a, a one-all draw at West Ham. You know, they're not quite in that in that magnificent form that they showed in the first half of the season. And Brentford, you know, winless in eight, but um, they've had a really tough run of fixtures there. You know, narrow defeats to Arsenal and, and Manchester City. Obviously said they were unlucky not to take three points against Manchester United last weekend. And then followed it up with a, a, a rare clean sheet in the, uh, in the nil-nil with Brighton. So... I think they can definitely build on those last two results. And, um, yeah, I like the look of them to to avoid defeat at Villa Park. Yeah, I watched them in the week again against Brighton. Wasn't a wasn't a thriller, as you, as, as you can imagine, the, the, the goalless draw. But they did look Brentford a lot more defensively resilient than they have at, at times this season. And you know, Thomas Frank seems to be getting a tune out of them once again. And a few important players uh, have returned from injury. Just uh, regarding Villa as well, I'll give you the... Uh, the top four odds as it stands, uh, despite Villa being fourth and top uh, and Tottenham fifth, Spurs are, are four to six favourites to finish in the top four ahead of Villa at six to five, and Man United as well quoted at around a fourteen to one. Do you think it's a, a straight shootout between Villa and Spurs for that for that fourth position? Of course, of course, fifth could still get uh, Champions League football next season as well, depending on the the Premier League's coefficient. Yeah, that's right. I think those it's hard to argue with those prices, really. You know, you you, you don't really see United in their current shape suddenly stringing a, 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 the kind of run they need to, to break into the top four or five. And and as I mentioned, Villa, you know, just starting to wobble a little bit, perhaps. Um, you know, Tottenham not not consistent by any means themselves, but I think Tottenham maybe maybe will uh, just edge edge that fourth spot. Absolutely. But as we say, Villa may still get in the Champions League, even if they finish fifth, which would be a, a fantastic achievement. Moving on now to, and this may be because I'm a, a lower league fan and a bit of a sucker for punishment uh, at, at times, but uh, a very attractive looking game in some ways at three o'clock. It's, it's the Sean Dyche derby between Everton and Burnley, two sides scrapping for survival at the, at the bottom end of the table. Everton Without a win in 13 Premier League games, four to six though to win this one. It's three to one the draw. Burnley four to one. The Clarets have been improving of late, and James, you, you never know if they could get a, a positive result in this one, then they may potentially still have an outside chance of survival. Which sounds ridiculous, me saying it, particularly based on on what we've seen from Burnley for the majority of the season. No, I mean they're, they're certainly on their their best run of the season, which admittedly isn't saying much, but. Yeah, I'm beaten in four games, uh, two all draws away at, at West Ham and against Chelsea last weekend, where I, th- I think they were reduced to 10 men in the 40th minute, uh, then fell behind fairly late on and still managed to, to come up with an equaliser. So that would have been a huge morale boost for, for a side who've really struggled since since romping to the championship title last season. 
Um, and, uh, and and picked up another point in in midweek at home to Wolves. I think the I think the draw is quite an attractive price here at, at three to one. Yeah, you know, you're, you're you're looking at Everton winless in 13 league games. Uh, yeah, Sean Dyche sounded quite encouraged by the the result at Newcastle. They nicked a, a one all draw late penalty. They only had three shots on target. One of those was the the penalty from Dominic Calvert Lewin. And I, you know, I'm still so reluctant to be getting involved with Everton at, at, at short odds, particularly against the Burnley side who who have uh, have been improving in recent weeks. So yeah, the draw looks the, uh, the the best bet here. Yeah, I might be in the minority getting getting excited about that game. I don't think it's going to be a, a lot of goals. It's very much a, a relegation six point or a, a dog fight. You'd, you'd feel would be on the cards, but yeah, intriguing and a, a lot at stake at the very least. Uh, Elsewhere at three o'clock, there's Fulham, who I find very difficult to predict uh, at home against Newcastle's side, still eyeing a qualification for Europe next season, but also still decimated by injuries. The, the Fulham win is available at 29 to 20, 11 to 4 the draw, 17 to 10 for Newcastle to win on the road. And I suppose those prices, James, as well, kind of tell the story that this one seems very difficult to predict. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, two teams whose whose game, games have involved plenty of goals recently. I'm going to try and steer clear of the the, the match betting market because it is tricky. Uh, uh, but I think over three point five goals is is a uh, is a really appealing um, bet. I mean, Fulham actually have a fantastic home record. Won seven of their last ten at Craven Cottage. They scored twenty five goals in in that time. And, you know, their last two home games have been 3-0 wins against Brighton and, and Tottenham. So they'll be be confident, be happy to, to get back to their own patch. They've had a couple of tough away games, drawing 3-3 at Sheffield United and then losing 3-1 at Forest in, in midweek. So, you know, the fact that they're conceding that many goals against against two teams down at the bottom of the table is a concern. So I think I think goals is the way to go. I mean, Newcastle's matches uh, pretty much since Christmas have, have been absolutely ridiculous when it comes to uh, goal mouth action. Ten of their last 12 have had over 3.5 goals. Uh, obviously, they had that dramatic 4-3 win against against West Ham, coming from 3-1 down very late on. Uh, and uh, their last away game, they lost 3-2 at Chelsea. So, yeah, I'm expecting the goals to, to flow by the River Thames. Yeah, the entertainers at Newcastle, not quite uh, Kevin Keegan's entertainers, maybe, although that, there was a link between the two sides there with Keegan having also uh, managed Fulham. But that could be a, a very entertaining game and very watchable, uh, certainly, as could Luton against Bournemouth. Luton fighting for their lives at the, towards the bottom of the table. They're 11 to 4 to win this game, 14 to 5 the draw, 10 to 11 Bournemouth, who've hit a bit of form themselves of late, really. A former a run that started with their superb come from behind victory in the reverse fixture between these two sides just a couple of weeks ago. 3 0 Bournemouth were down to Luton at half time in that game. They came back to win at 4 3. James, are we going to get similar excitement this time around at Kenilworth Road? Um, having been at the Arsenal Luton match uh, in, in midweek, I suspect not. Um, but obviously, we have a very different approach from Luton. But they looked, you know, they're, they're, I think they were missing eleven players for for that game, and they and they did struggle to to put together any any kind of uh, attacking moves. Had to work hard, put it in a decent shift to to, to limit Arsenal to a, a two nil win. Um, you know, they'll be targeting targeting this game as a you know a potentially. Um, uh, three points, but I, I suspect I suspect Bournemouth can uh, can can uh, get the job done here. I mean, they seem to be quite a streaky side, bit of a confidence side. They had a, a great run, I think, just before the October um, international break, and um, and now, as you said, they're on a on another good run of form. Um, so I, I, I like the look of the draw Bournemouth double result in this. Um, I think it could be a bit of a slow burner. Obviously, that that copped in spectacular fashion in the in the reverse fixture when Luton were three 0 up at half time and uh, and lost four three. I'm not not expecting quite that level of uh, of drama, but um, uh, Luton, as I mentioned, severely depleted by injuries, and they've conceded a lot of second half goals all all the way through the season, which is understandable given the the, the step up to Premier League football with the resources they've got. 64% of the goals they've conceded have, have come after half-time. 
And I think Bournemouth seem to be kind of controlling matches a, a bit better these days. Um, beat Palace 1-0 with a late goal in midweek. Palace only had three three shots on on goal in in the whole game, so yeah yeah I think Bournemouth can um, can can show their class in the second half. Yeah, a bit more Premier League know how perhaps with the with the Cherries are enjoying enjoying a, a really decent season under Andoni Iraiola. The the final three o'clock kickoff then on Saturday Wolves against West Ham two sides fighting it out with uh, several others to perhaps secure European qualification, maybe the Europa League, maybe the Conference League uh, for next term. Wolves 6-4 to four to win on home soil, 13-5 to five the draw, 17-10 to 10, uh, for West Ham to get the victory. And yeah, it's it's a big game for both if they do have ambitions of qualifying for Europe. It is, yeah. I must admit this was the, the, the one game on the Saturday coupon that really had me scratching my head. I think they're you know, the two, two well-matched teams, which is illustrated by the league table, if Wolves win, they'll go level on points with West Ham. Um, having said that, Wolves, you know, had a, an excellent first season under under Gary O'Neill, who's, who's obviously attracting attention from, from bigger clubs as well. Uh, I think, you know, they've, they've, they've got plenty of attacking injuries, you know, Pedro Neto and, uh, and He-Chan Huang, two hugely influential players for them, are, are going to miss out. And uh, Mateus Cunha has only just come back to uh, into the squad. A um, couple of disappointing results for, for Wolves in, in the last week. Lost 2-0 at, uh, at Villa, who, as I mentioned earlier, not, not in particularly hot form themselves. And then drew, drew at Burnley. So I, I think at the prices, I'm, I'm going to edge tentatively towards a West Ham win. Um, just because of the attacking quality they've got. Obviously, they, they showed that uh, at Newcastle um, and also showed their, their defensive vulnerability when they let slip that 3-1 lead to, to lose 4-3 uh, at St. James's Park. But I, I think uh, with Wolves' attacking absentees, I, I think if West Ham can, can score a couple of goals, which they're, they're always capable of, uh, then, then they can take the points, you know, steady the ship after that, after that, that shock result at Newcastle with a... A draw at home to Tottenham, and um, yeah, I, th- I think they can kick on. Yeah, so it could be uh, David Moyes in this week then, if uh, if they can't secure <laughs> the uh, three points. Seems to be very up and down with with him and the the West Ham fans at the moment. The uh, five thirty so kick on... wins the Europa League for them. Yeah, yeah, we win the Europa League and <laughs> they'll finish eighth from the. <laughs> it it should should the of which respite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 5.30 kick-off then on Saturday. We will turn our attention back to the, the title race, but Brighton are also one of the sides involved in, in the European battle. They're at home, of course, to Arsenal. James, as you alluded to, you're at the uh, arsenal Luton game in, in the week, perhaps uh, showing your allegiances there and who you want to win uh, win the title. The pressure might be on Arsenal coming into this game if, as we expect, Liverpool beat Sheffield United on Thursday evening and Manchester City win at Crystal Palace in Saturday's early kickoff, the Brighton win is 17 to 4, 10 to 3 at the draw, and the Gunners are 3 to 5, uh, strong favourites to uh, to survive any potential pressure and get the three points. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, last last weekend's game at City was was the last head to head between the, the three title uh, contenders. But Arsenal have got some huge games coming up, you know, never mind the, the, the Champions League um, against Bayern Munich. Brighton away, then they've got Villa at home. Wolves away, Chelsea at home, and, and Tottenham away in their next next five league fixtures. So you know they're not going to be long odds on to to win to win many of those. Um, I think they will pass this this test at Brighton. Um, I, I wouldn't be getting stuck into them at, at, at kind of short price just to win in ninety minutes, but maybe a small bet on Arsenal to win to nil. I mean, we obviously saw their defensive excellence uh, uh, against Manchester City in that. Um, uh, kind of uh, Italian style uh, defensive masterclass or or a snooze fest, depending on your on your point of view. Um, but you know, I mean, Gabriel and, and William Saliba have formed a, a terrific partnership, and um, you know they kept kept Luton at bay without without uh, much difficulty in midweek as well. Uh, just looking at Arsenal's defensive record in the last eight games, they've conceded three goals. One was a, an own goal from Gabriel against Liverpool. One was up from an absolute howler by Aaron Ramsdale uh, uh, against Brentford. So, you know, they're, they're just not giving up chances to, to opponents. And, and you know, Brighton are respected at home, are pretty poor travellers. 
Um, but uh, I, I think Arsenal can kind of keep them at arm's length. Uh, they won the reverse fixture 2-0 and, and uh, Brighton have very, very few opportunities. I think only one shot on target. And, uh, and Brighton's 0-0 draw at Brentford was the, actually the fifth time in 11 games this year that they've they've failed to score in the Premier League. So you know, for all their for all their quality football under Roberto Di Zerbi, they're not quite got the uh, got the cutting edge up front. Yeah, and if they'd still been playing now, Brighton, based on what they did against Brentford last night, they still wouldn't have scored. It was uh, one of those games for uh, Roberto De Zerbi's side. Uh, the other two games taking place on Sunday, other than the uh, the Manchester United-Liverpool match we've already touched upon, at 5.30, Sheffield United against Chelsea. The Blades 6-1 to one to win on home soil, 17-4 to four the draw, 2-5 to five for Chelsea to win on the road. The caveat, like with the United-Liverpool game, is these two sides are in action this evening. But, but regardless of what happens uh, on Thursday, James, it looks like uh, a game that that even this inconsistent Chelsea should be able to go on and win? You'd have, you'd have thought so, yeah. I mean, I think I'd, I'd be looking at uh, Chelsea to win and over 3.5 goals here. You know, they're, they're not not the kind of team who are grinding out 1-0 wins and and kind of managing the game and looking solid. They're, they're, they've scored bundles of goals and created lots of opportunities pretty much throughout the season under, under Mauricio Pochettino. But, you know, their defence is so hard to trust. And... And Sheffield United, uh, you know, they don't don't really have uh, any option but to but to go for it. The uh, the position they're in, and they've shown shown some attacking endeavour in in recent weeks. Drew two all at, at Bournemouth and and three all at home to Fulham last weekend. Obviously, the the galling uh, aspect of that for for Chris Wilder will be that they had had uh, two goal leads in both of those games and, and blew them. So. Um, uh, you know they they could contribute uh, to to a high scoring game. Uh, I, I just think Chelsea's forwards will uh, will will create plenty of opportunities um, before their Thursday game against Manchester United. Nine of Chelsea's previous eleven games had had over three point five goals. Just looking at their their FA Cup ties against Leeds and and, and Leicester, they beat Leeds three two, Leicester four two. You know their teams going for automatic promotion from the Championship. They're arguably stronger than than Sheffield United uh, at the bottom of the Premiership, so Premier League. Sorry, <laughs> old school. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think uh, I think Chelsea are going to win a uh, quite a high scoring contest here. Yeah. yeah, it could be quite entertaining. Five thirty kickoff on Sunday. That one, a uh, slightly strange kickoff time. It's because of the uh, Sheffield uh, half marathon that's uh, taking place uh, uh, that day. Uh, so that's why that one's at 5.30. Slightly strange kickoff as well for the, the final game of the weekend. Tottenham against Nottingham Forest was originally down for a, a Monday night fixture, but instead it will be 6 p.m. on Sunday. Spurs 2-5 to five to win, 17-4 to four the draw, 11-2 to two for Nottingham Forest. And, and this is a game that has uh, or could have huge bearings on the, the battle for the top four and the and the relegation fight. Yeah, absolutely. It's a... Um... It's, it's a, another tricky one, this, actually. I mean, Tottenham have, have had so many injury problems this season and uh, obviously losing Hyung min Son to the, the, the Asian Cup as well in, in January. But their, their squad looks in really good shape now. Uh, so it's, it's a bit strange that they've not not really... That's not been reflected in their, their recent results. They've not really kicked on since that, that 4-0 uh, win at Aston Villa, which, which you know, felt like a, a really significant moment in their season. Uh, they went and lost lost three 0 at Fulham in their next game. Um, then then needed one of their their trademark late goals to uh, to to beat Luton two one in their last home game, and then and then drew it at West Ham in midweek. So uh, yeah, I mean this is a another another big game for for Tottenham, but obviously Forest now um, scrapping scrapping hard at the bottom. Um, got a much needed win at, at home to Fulham in in midweek. Still not convinced by by them at all. They drew their previous two games with with Palace and Luton. I mean, they do carry a goal threat. I I, I think um, the best bet for me in this one is Tottenham to win two one, which is a a, a favourite scoreline of theirs. They've had had uh, five two one wins at, at home in the league this season. Um, and Forest, I, I think they can land a blow on a, on an inconsistent Tottenham defence, but. Um, Tottenham can can just about edge it. Uh, Forest are, are pretty poor travellers and and got got a, a a pretty 
poor record uh, against the top five. I think they've lost seven of their eight meetings this season. Yeah, it could be a, a decent day then for Spurs, but they do have a habit of conceding and conceding at first. That victory for Forest in the week has boosted their survival hopes. And just to give you a little update on the to be relegated market, Sheffield United and Burnley still heavy odds on Luton four to eleven to go down. Forest then three to one. Everton seven to two, and then you're looking at Brentford and Crystal Palace who are around twenty and twenty five to one respectively. Okay, so that rounds up all the action in the Premier League this weekend. Plenty are taking place across Saturday and Sunday. We'll now turn our attention to the EFL and and bring in. Aaron Ashley to uh, talk us through everything that's been taking place and these tips and predictions in the Championship, League One and League Two. If you want some free football bets this season, we've got you covered. Simply head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets and there you'll find over £200 worth of them for you to use this season. That's racingpost.com forward slash free bets. Right, well, we're going to turn our focus to all things EFL. And now, like with the Premier League, we're certainly into the business end of the season. We've just come out of the, the other side of the Easter double header. Matches took place on Good Friday and on Easter Monday in the Championship. Big, important victories for Ipswich, Leeds and Leicester. Looks like that uh, race for the uh, Championship title and promotion to the Premier League is going to go down to the wire. But there's still plenty to be decided up and down the EFL. Plenty of teams looking for promotion, playoff places and just looking to survive in their respective divisions. I'm joined by by Aaron Ashley to take us through this weekend's action. He'll be bringing us his, his best free tips uh, from the Championship League One and League Two uh, very shortly. But first of all, Aaron, we're going to focus on a side in the Championship that have ambitions of, of getting into the playoffs. They're also, of course, going brilliantly in the FA Cup. Of, of course, I'm talking about Coventry City. We've still got that slightly weird situation where they could potentially be double booked come May with the Championship playoff final and a potential FA Cup final. A lot to uh, go before then. But yeah, Coventry having a, another really good season. Exactly that, Tom. Yeah, Coventry this week's team in focus. Uh, last season, obviously, they finished fifth. They suffered that uh, gut-wrenching penalty shootout defeat to Luton. They were so close to the Premier League and they're two to one to finish in the top six again this term. They've still got a lot to do uh, in order to do that. Um, many felt their chance had gone uh, at the start of the season. They made such a slow start. Obviously, they won only three of their opening 16 games. Um, that was partly down to having to sell their top scorer, Victor Jirakesh, to Sporting. He's obviously now lighting it up in Portugal. While they also lost uh, the creative midfielder, Gustav, Gustavo Hamer, sorry, to Sheffield United. Losing those two big players was such a blow. And it was many were doubting them on the back of that, thinking that uh, that was their chance gone. Plenty has been done by uh, Mark Robbins um, over the summer. He signed a lot of young players and... There seems that there is plans in place to get them in the Premier League, whether it be this season or whether it be next. He signed a lot of players. Um, he signed uh, Ellis Sims and Haji Wright to replace the goals of uh, Jirakesh. They've got 17 goals and 16 goals, respectively. And they are really now start, uh, finding their stride uh, as the season comes to a close. As you say, obviously, they've showed what they can do by making the uh, FA Cup semi-final. Um, and that big game against Glamour Tie against Manchester United is on the horizon. But they will still have ambitions that they can break into the top six. As I said, there is work to do. Um, they're currently uh, four points outside the top six. They do have an all-important game in hand. The problem for them is they've still got to play Leeds, Ipswich and Southampton, which shows uh, how tough that is going to be. But they did beat Leicester 3-1 at home in January, so that shows what they're capable of, and they'll believe that they still can break into that top six. As I said, um, Mark Robbins, he's already bolstered his squad for next season. He signed uh, Efron Mason-Clark, highly touted winger from Peterborough. Um, and he's really brought the average days down. He's really tried to sign young 22-year-old, 23-year-old players that want to want to work for their place and want want to basically build a future and however this season ends i really do think next season if they do not go up this season then they're going to be strong promotion contenders next year yeah absolutely they look like a club don't they that are really on a, a positive trajectory that under mark robbins who's been there such a long time coming through league two league one back in the championship it's 23 years isn't it since coventry were were last in the Premier League, found the members of, of that competition. But yeah, it looks like the future is bright. And 
I'm slightly surprised. Uh, I don't know about you, Aaron, that, that Mark Robbins perhaps is talked up a little bit more as a as a candidate for other jobs, and perhaps when a when a Premier League job becomes available. Exactly that. I think it would be um, very. We see that managers uh, leave a lot, and they don't get much time in the Premier League. I think it would be risky because there looks like they they are really building something, and there are plans in place for Coventry to return to the Premier League very soon. And as I said, they've got the, they might have the work cut out this season. They've got four points to make up on the top six. They do have a game in hand, but they have some tricky fixtures, and that FA Cup glamour tie may be a, a bit of a distraction that's not needed. But next season, for sure, I think they'd definitely be on a radar of many people to even challenge for the title. I don't see why not. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty to uh, look forward to if you're a Coventry supporter and they're a team to look out for over the remaining weeks of this season and, and potentially into next as well. As Aaron mentioned, 2-1 to one that Coventry finish in the top six. It's around about 12-1 to one that they can go on to secure promotion uh, come the end of the season. And don't forget, they're, they're still involved in the FA Cup as well, a semi-final tie at Wembley to come against Manchester United. So yeah, Coventry going well in the championship. Uh, how about your uh, your tips then uh, for, for the weekend's action, Aaron? How do you see uh, uh, these respective games uh, playing out? You've got a couple, uh, well, one from one from League One and a couple from League Two. That's correct, yeah. I've got uh, three tips in total, Tom. Uh, the first one is uh, Oxford to beat Burton. Uh, this is a big match at both ends of the League One table. Uh, Oxford are seeking a place in the playoffs and Burton have plenty of, plenty of work to do to uh, stay up, actually. Uh, Oxford are outside the top six and only goal difference, and they've won three of the last five league games to bolster that position. Uh, that includes a 4-0 route of Fleetwood last weekend. Burton, meanwhile, they're only one point above the drop, and it'll be a real concern to supporters. They've picked up only two points in their last nine league outings. They were beaten 3-1 at home to Barnsley last time out, and that was a six-straight league loss at the Pirelli Stadium, a run which also features defeats to play uh, to relegation rivals Carlisle and Port Vale. So odds against Oxford, who do need to break into that playoff place, uh, I think that makes plenty of appeal. Yeah, I must admit, I'm a Carlisle supporter, and we've done the double over Burton this season, so where we are in the table, that probably says a, says a lot about them. But yeah, potentially a, a good... A good weekend for Oxford. Down to League Two then for the for the other two bets. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, Barrow uh, second. They're, they're eight to eleven um, at home to Swindon, and I think that's that's just makes all your actors this weekend. To be honest, uh, they're only six points off the automatic promotion places, but it does look like a playoff spot is the most likely uh, destination for the uh, Cumbrians. They currently sit fifth, um, but I fancy them to win at home to Swindon, who've lost four of the last five league games. They're kind of they've kind of just done enough to stay up now, but they've not really got much to play for. So motivation levels will be on the wane. Uh, Barrow, they've been going great guns at home this season. They've lost only twice in 20 uh, home league matches and they've won four of the last five on their own patch and kept four clean sheets in that period. Swindon, on the other hand, they lost 3-1 at, um, away at third bottom Sutton last time out, which means they've now failed to win any of their last nine away games. and They've took only two points in that period. So it's a long trip and I think it'll be a wasted journey. Yeah, it could be a disappointing afternoon then for Swindon. And your, and your final tip, Aaron? Uh, Harrogate to avoid defeat at Notts County. Um, it's been some nose, uh, nosedive from Notts County. Uh, they started the campaign like they were going to be a real force in the title race. Obviously, um, a few managerial departure didn't help, but obviously they're now 16th and they've won only twice in 16 league outings this year. They failed to win any of the last seven matches at home. And I think they look vulnerable at home to Harrogate, who are actually finishing the season quite well. And they're now four places above Notts County in the table, having gone five matches and beaten. And they were 5-1 winners at home to Gillingham last time out. So confidence should be flying. Um, despite their mid-table position, Harrogate have actually have the third best away record in the league. Uh, they've lost only five of their 21 away league games. And they've picked up positive results against five of the current top six. So odds against, I think they look a big prize to avoid defeat against the Notts County side that's really struggling to uh, put their best foot forward at the moment. Yeah, it's quite interesting in League Two, ever ever unpredictable. But if you probably said at the start of the season which teams would be having better seasons, Barrow or Swindon uh, or Harrogate and, and Notts County, you wouldn't have Barrow and, and Harrogate maybe as the as the two flying high. That's correct, yeah. It's, it's, it's obviously a league that is... Um, Right at the top end, it is driven by money and finance. So obviously, the the bigger hitters are always going to be up there. But um, yeah, Barrow have really, really um, they've done really well under Pete Wilde and continue to punch above their weight. And they des fully deserve a place in the playoffs. Yeah, it could be a, a very interesting end to the season for Barrow. A long, long time since they've been in the in the third tier of English football. But yeah, just to recap your your tips then, Aaron, you're going for Oxford to beat Burton, Barrow to beat Swindon, and Harrogate or drawing the double chance market against Notts County. Yeah, that's correct, Tom. 
Oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's interesting to see how those pan out. Could be a very interesting treble, or if you want to put a few singles on, on there for those respective games, yeah, the intrigue is, as we mentioned, we're in the business end of the campaign. Now, this is when the, the, the points uh, really, really do matter. Thank you very much, then, Aaron, for joining us. It'll be interesting to see, yeah, if, we, if we've got three winners there. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Fingers crossed, mate. Fingers crossed. Well, now, uh, switch our attention then back to the Premier League and James you put together your bet builder uh, for the weekend's action and you've focused on Saturday's 5.30 kickoff between Brighton and title-chasing Arsenal. Yeah, that's right. I mentioned earlier Arsenal to win to nil at a, a, a decent price. And um, I'm along the same lines with my bet builder, so the first two legs I've gone for Arsenal to win and under 3.5 goals, um, you know, mentioned Arsenal's defensive qualities. Um and Brighton, I think probably still with striker Evan Ferguson out, um, uh, Kaoru Mitoma is obviously sidelined as well, just lacking that bit of quality in the in the final third. Had plenty of possession at, at Brentford in midweek, uh, didn't create much in the way of clear chances. And and I think Arsenal should be able to, to keep them quiet, particularly with Declan Rice and Jorginho likely to return to the midfield. Uh, in front of that that, that outstanding defence that the, the Gunners have put together. Um, I mean, Arsenal's last three away wins was 6-0, 5-0 and 6-0. I'm not expecting that kind of, of scoreline at the Amex Stadium. Brighton pretty solid at home. But um, but yeah, Brighton really struggled to lay a, lay a glove on Arsenal at the Emirates in, in December's reverse fixture. So I think Arsenal can win a, a, a tight game here. Um, uh, Pascal Gross was was booked at the Emirates uh, before Christmas. Uh, picked up two yellow cards in his last four league starts as well for Brighton. So he's the uh, the third leg. Pascal Gross to be booked. Uh, he's been playing a kind of defensive midfield role recently, and um, you know against that that fluid Arsenal uh, uh, attacking unit, I think he's going to have to um, uh, have a, a a busy afternoon and um, may well find himself in trouble. Yeah, it could be a a routine victory then for Arsenal. Just to recap the uh, the three legs of that bet builder in the Brighton the Arsenal game: Arsenal to win under three point five goals and Pascal Gross to be booked. That bet bet builder uh, pays out at around fourteen to one if successful. Moving on then, James, to your to your treble uh, for the weekend. Not just looking at Premier League action, but but further afield as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a couple that I've, I've mentioned in the, the Premier League roundup. So the, the first one, over 3.5 goals in Fulham against Newcastle. I mean, both both clubs can can play with with a bit of freedom, and um, you know Fulham have, have been in, in terrific form at Craven Cottage recently. Scored three times against Brighton, three times against Spurs in their last two, and uh, and ten of Newcastle's last 12 league games have produced over over 3.5 goals. So I'm expecting uh, fun and games at, at Craven Cottage uh, this weekend. Um, second leg, Bournemouth to beat Luton. Uh, you know they obviously needed something pretty spectacular to uh, get the points in the in the recent reverse fixture, coming from three nil down to win four um, three. They've, they've kicked on well since then, and um, yeah, Luton. You know they've they've, they've put in a magnificent uh, effort to 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 be where they are. I think a lot of a lot of people at the start of the season would have had them relegated by this point. But um, uh, I, th I think um, injuries are starting to take their toll. They had a, a, a tough game at Arsenal in midweek. And uh, Bournemouth have been really ruthless against the, uh, the bottom eight clubs. Won eight of their 12 games. And uh, yeah, they should bank the points at, at Kenilworth Road. And then for the final leg of the treble, I'm heading to, to Italy. Uh, Bologna, who... Liverpool fans may be monitoring their form because their, their manager Thiago Motta has been been linked as a possible successor to, to Jurgen Klopp, and you can certainly see why they're up to fourth in Serie A. You know, pretty unfancied club in in Italy. Won eight of their last nine games, and the only blot on that recent record was a, a one nil defeat to to Inter, who are running away with the title. So no no shame in that result. Uh, I think they're going to claim. Yet another win away to Frosinone, who've lost 12 of their 13 games against teams in the top eight this season. And uh, Bologna, absolutely flying. Yeah, we could have Bologna, Aston Villa, Girona from La Liga in, in the Champions League next season. It could have a, 
an interesting and, and fresh look to it. But yeah, that treble of over 3.5 goals in Fulham v Newcastle, Bournemouth to beat Luton and Bologna to beat Frosinone. Uh, that one uh, would pay out at around 15 to 2. That Bologna game kicks off at 11.30 in the morning on Sunday. Finally then, James, uh, your map for the weekend as well. What are you picking out? Yeah, I'm going for Burnley or draw double chance against Everton. Um, tip the, the draw at, at three to one earlier, but you know if you want a, a more solid option to support the Clarets, I think just backing them to avoid defeat looks a, looks a good bet. I mean, you just can't get away from the fact that Everton are sort of four to six, having won one of their last 17 games in all competitions, and uh, and and Burnley, as as we mentioned earlier. You know, showed great character in that in that uh, draw at Chelsea last last weekend, uh, playing the entire second half with ten men, uh, and and uh, unbeaten then in their last four games. So yeah, I think they're uh, going to be capable of frustrating their their former boss Sean Dyche. Yeah, I must admit those odds do look a, a little bit short for Everton given their their current form, and it's it's going to be a very as we mentioned earlier on a very nervy game you'd imagine at Goodison. Parker. But that, yeah, that rounds everything up then, uh, James, uh, for, for, for me and you for this week. I think we've done a, a solid enough job of, of filling in for, for Jack and Mark. Big shoes to fill, of course. But yeah, hopefully we've, uh, we've got some winning bets there for everyone listening. Right then. So yeah, as I say, thanks very much for joining us. Jack and Mark will be back in the hot seats next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. And we'll, we'll catch you again very soon for another episode of Mark Landon's Bets Club. And of course, remember to gamble responsibly.